Is your talent gardening? Dinky guessed. The children in the schoolyard where Apple Blossom was showing off her new cutie mark with the pink flower. Nope, she replied. My talent is prune fumes. Huh? Every pony uttered. Actually, I have thunder dash to fake me for my cutie mark. When he told me the other day that I smelled nice, I got an idea. Thunder blushed. You heard that? Yeah, I'm glad I did. See? One morning that one of Aunt Applejack's pies fell on my head and that's when I had that smell, I figured that I could use that to make perfume. She opened her saddlebag and withdrew some spray bottles and squirted some at Lightning Dash. The Pegasus grunted in annoyance, but whip took a whiff of her herself. Mmm, smells good, she said bluntly. So why is your cutie mark a flower and not a perfume bottle? Dinky asked. Because I made perfume with apple blossoms and I pressed in my scrapbook, Apple Blossom explained. They had fallen off from the trees before they could turn to apples. Mom says my cutie mark means that I could give every pony an apple flowery scent. While every pony congratulated Apple Blossom, Screwball sat on the bench with a doodle filled with in dirt of his stick. Screwball! The filly jumped down and turned to face Apple Blossom. Weren't you listening to my story? Screwball shook her head. Sorry, Blossom. Congratulations on your cutie mark. Her other friends gathered around to see what they had occupied in. Since when did you become so girly? Thunder inquired. What does that mean? Screwball asked. Lainey pointed at the dirt that was covered in little hearts and then with big ones with the initials SB and MB written on them. Screwball dropped her stick and she did not realize that she had been drawing all that. Oh, Dinky exclaimed. Who's MB? No pony, Moth Screwball insisted, using her magic to make the doodles disappear. Apple Blossom squinted her face. Wait a minute, she gasped dramatically. No way! Screwy's got a crush! What? No, I don't. Yes, you do. You're blushing like crazy. Dinky squealed. Oh my gosh! Who is it? Is he cute? What color is his mane? It's not Thunder Dash, is it? Is it Cinnamon Stick? You girls are all standing right here, right? Cinnamon Stick scowled. No, so spill, Apple Blossom urged. Who is it? Screwball was initially saved by the bell as the other foals hasted it inside the schoolhouse. She let out a sigh of relief. Over the past month, she and Prince Mothball have been meeting up frequently. In those means, they have played, laughed, and confided each other. Neither of them have even told anyone about this becoming harder and harder for Screwball to keep a secret from her friends and family. Apple Blossom was the first, not the first one to notice anything weird about her behavior. Last week at dinner, her mother had been the one to observe Screwball's lack of appetite. Is everything all right, honey? Flourish, I asked. The filly had not responded, and she spread her mashed potatoes all over the plate. Hmm, she said, returned to reality. Oh, I'm just not hungry. I think I've made out what the problem is, her father said, snapping his fingers, turning to potatoes into cotton candy. Then his eyes widened at the shape that he had made of food. Now, when did you become those hearts and kisses? Screwball then had qu quickly eaten her meal and pretended like nothing happened. Then she came home with a dreamy look in her eyes. Her parents were especially suspicious. Tell me there's also something wrong with our daughter, Discord said. Not wrong, Fluttershy replied, shaking her head. Just particular. Well, I'll say. When we bowled yesterday, she knocked down the pins and they jumped back and stood up the shape of a heart. Then when she jumped to the pool, her splash was heart-shaped too. And now she's making goo-goo eyes? What happened to my non-kissy, non-mushy little girl? You see you don't see it. Don't see what? She put her hoof on her forehead. Honey, I believe our daughter is experiencing her first crush. Discord blinked. Crush? Does that mean there is a boy? His body became feared with flames. Who is he? I'll burn him to a crisp if he thinks that he could date my daughter. He then would have burned down the entire house had Fluttershy not dumped a bucket of water on him. She always had to make sure there was one handy whenever he blew his top. What would you get a hold of yourself? Fluttershy demanded. This is a good thing. How could we possibly have this be a good thing? Discord snapped, his eyes filling with tears. How would can it be good that my daughter is all grown up? He scowled. I'm getting to the bottom of this. Screwball glanced up at her from her homework as her dad swung open the door. Who is it? He demanded. The filly blinked. Who are you? Your mother is on a crazy suspicion that you have a crush. Of course, Screwball's cheeks turned pinker. I, um, is it true? It's not true, is it? She sighed in relief. Yeah, right. No crush here. Discord then laughed and then ruffled her mane. I knew she was just pulling my leg. To think that my daughter would get a mushy over a boy. She smiled nervously. Yeah, to think. What does he, you mean by those things again? Mothball asked, examining the strange substance in his hooves. Donuts, Screwball answered with a mouthful. They're fantastic. 
So you can eat whole foods? Sure, but they don't usually taste very good. Chocolate is an exception. It just t make tastes like love. Oh, okay, your turn. After swallowing the rest of his donut, Mothball tapped his chin. They had been going back and forth over questions since their first meeting. Your unicorn friend, he said. Is that the one with the strange eyes? How did this happen? Was it by accident? Screwball shook her head. It runs in her family. She and I were actually born on the same day, and we've been best friends ever since. One year, we've had a birthday party at my house, and the next at Dinky's, and then mine, and so on. He scratched his head. What's a birthday party? She blinked. Wow, you don't you really need to get out more. A birthday party is a party where you have to celebrate the day of your birth. In that case, if we had birthday parties at the Hive, there would be every day. Screwball snickered. Aunt Pinky would have had a blast. She's the crazy one, right? You bet as tail as she is, although she's not really my aunt, but she's still my favorite. She could turn any bad day around just being herself. Plus, she gave me this cool hat as a baby. Mothball sighed. You certainly have an amazing friend and family, even though most of them are not related to you. I don't get it. Why aren't the changelings your age to play with? I'm not sure, but we don't play. We train, and we learn how to hunt to feed ourselves. I have to learn especially from what my mother says if I'm going to be king. I have to find food for the hive. Screwball then glanced down and circled her hoof around her nervously. Does it hurt? What hurts? When you feed on other ponies, love, do you hurt them? Mothball cringe. Well, we, when we drain them of love, we drain them of their power. They're slowly weakened, but if they're not to hurt, we, we are not around for them for too long. He then paused and backed away from Screwball. Maybe we shouldn't. The filly gasped and pointed at the sky. Look, a shooting star! Her eyes then were cross-eyed and concentrated. What are you doing? The prince asked. If you make a wish on the shooting star, it will come true, she explained. What did you wish for? She laughed. Silly, you can't tell your wish, or else it won't come true. I failed to see a star in the process of magical wish-granting abilities. If you're talking to a nerf pony with chaotic powers, fair point. Oh, I got another one. This one's yours. Go on, make a wish. Mothball glanced at the filly and then at the star and then had the idea a bit silly. But he did not want to disappoint his friend. Before the star burnt out, he shut his eyes and silently made a wish. I wish I wasn't a changeling, so I could have a heart. But the forbidden friendship was not to remain secret forever. Screwball and Mothball was prepared to meet each other for the next game of volleyball. He had been made a hole in the wall, each laying outside, leaving but concealed by the changeling poster. The only decoration that had been allowed. He was to lift it up with a chilling voice to stop him in his tracks. Were you going somewhere, my son? The prince gasped and turned to his mother with a fake grin. Well, what are you talking about, mother? I was just moving out this poster. Chrysalis chuckled. You can cut the charade, son. I know your secret exit. Where have you been sneaking off for the past several weeks? Mothball gulped. There was no use hiding anymore, and he had been caught red hoof. He got down his knees. I'm prepared for my punishment, mother, he said, shutting his eyes with shiver. Punishment? Chrysalis said, raising an eyebrow. You want me to punish you for doing exactly what I told you? He then opened his eyes and looked up in confusion. What? I asked you to find out whatever you could the uh, halfling you have. You're quite brilliant, my son. That silly filly does not suspect a thing. Of course your mission will have to be cut short. What do you mean? The queen smirked as she laid her hoof on the colt's shoulder. You're doing so well, son, that you're ready for the next level of training. It will require long and tenderless hours, so your little scheme will have to be put on hold. Mothball choked back at what his mother was saying. She had known what he was doing all along, but he knew he had to stop. But what did he mean by next level of training? She did seem to be right on his thoughts. The spawn of discord could be more useful than I thought. She could be the key to our success. And you, my son, she lifted his chin towards her, will be the one to turn that key into the lock. The chill ran up his spine as he heard the voice. What do you mean, mother? She let him go and walked over to the curtain covering the entrance. Your first lesson in your training, news training, son, she grinned evilly. Breaking a heart. The prince could not speak. His mother cackled darkly. Go, she commanded. Meet your little girlfriend and inform her you're unable to see her again. But just don't tell her. Break her. Be cool. Be cold. Be vicious. You, Mothball stammered. You want me to what? Break the filly's fragile heart and enjoy the pleasure that you could get from it. But, 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 if you don't do as I say, I will know. His legs quivered. She would know. He had spies everywhere, and she, he was the fool that he could think he could sneak out unnoticed. 
he had only, she only let him go so he could do his dirty work. Now she was asking him to break the beautiful heart. He admired the invite and even emotionally hurt the pony that he belonged to. He wanted to refuse, but how could he? He could not even disobey his mother. As Mothball approached the dark chocolate river lake, he then looked as he was surrounded by sand. The screwball stood by the net, bouncing the volleyball on her head. She smiled at the innocent as they frowned at what he had to do. When Screwball saw her best friend, she caught his the ball in her eye, hooves. What did it take you so long? I, uh, he stuttered. I had trouble sneaking out. She shrugged. That's okay. You want to serve first? Her swirly eyes sparkled with excitement. He looked away so he could avoid getting thing lost in them. He searched for the trees for changeling scouts, but did not expect to find any for those the masters of camouflage. He would in his life be watching right now and would report to their queen of his actions. Mothball stepped closer to Screwball, still avoiding her gaze. She took a deep breath. We can't play volleyball tonight, Screwball. The Phillies grinned, wavered, but kept up. Okay, can we play something else if you like? No, Scree, I see I can't play with you anymore. This time her smile vanished completely. What? Why? His mother's words rang into his head. Be cruel, be cool, be vicious. I, he narrowed his eyes and lifted his chin up in a fashion. I just don't want to play with you anymore. You've gotten boring. Screwball dropped the ball in disbelief. Mothball, what's going on? Why are you lying to me? He winced. He had forgotten that he was living a lie detector, and he struck. an idea struck him. He knew that she could tell that he was lying, but his mother did not. I'm not lying, he insisted. I've grown tired of you. It was fun for a while, but then it became dull, and I think I risked getting into trouble. Well, be for you, but you're lucky no one caught me. Screwball's eyes widened in realization. She could feel the falseness in every word, including the last sentence that he had been caught, possibly by his mother. But why was he acting like this? It's really amazing I was never caught, he continued. I mean, my mother has spies everywhere, and they don't know a thing about this. I never lie, Screwball understood now, but they were being watched, But so he was pretending to be cruel. After a long pause, she decided to play along. Well, fine, she snapped. Maybe I'm tired of you. Mothball was slightly taken aback and straightened up and tried to look cold. If you're so tired of each other, maybe we shouldn't see each other anymore. Fine with me. He could not tell but gotten his message, but the spies were watching, and he retained his image. You know, you were never my friend. You're just a stupid, funny-eyed girl. Screwball then gasped and almost struck him with a lightning bolt. Remember that it was a lie and can control herself. Well, maybe you aren't my friend either, but I just like disobeying my parents. After all, I could be friends with a heartless monster. Why can't I be one? He felt a pain in his chest, but he told himself that she was acting. Okay then, I'll never sneak out to see you again. She then, he then turned on his hoof and took the skies, and Screwball bit her cheeks. It was the best thing she could do to contain her grin. He had been lying. Now make a wish and blow out the candles, Pinkie Pie screeched. The seven layer cakes set in front of Dinky and Screwball and had furry candles, fifteen for each of them. The party was held at Screwball's this year, and a good thing too, because there were many guests and much space was needed. Three interjected poofy haired fillies hovered around the birthday cakes. One was blue, one was deep magenta, and the fur was a light red. Quick, quick, the blue one, one urged. Blow them out, cried the magenta one. So so we could dig in, the red one clapped. Blueberry, raspberry, cherry, Pinkie Pie shouted, hushing the girls to the back of their seats. Calm yourselves. Screwball looked up at her friend. You ready? Pinkie nodded. On free. One, they counted together. Two, free. They inhaled simultaneously and extinguished the tiny flames while Screwball... Ball and Dinky were snapped by a snapped a picture by Fluttershy, who snapped it. And there was cheers from every pony and a cry from the baby. Is that yours or mine? Discord asked Applejack. I got this one, Spike, Spike declared, rushing over to the ba purple baby carriage. He took a bottle out of his bag and fed the infant. There you go, little fella. That's a good little apple, Spike. It turns out that it was possible for a dragon and a pony to have a child. But at a glance, the foal looked normal. But the orange earth pony with green hair until you saw its green reptilian eyes and a scaly orange tail. The young colt let out a burp, coughing up the green flyer. Spike could only smile. That's my special boy. Discord then put his hands around the birthday girl's shoulders. So, what did you gals wish for? I wish that Dinky's wish would come true, Screwball said. Aw, thanks, Scurry, Dinky sniffled. In that case, the Draconicus said, What did you wish for, Miss Dew? I, uh, the unicorn blushed. I wish for muffins. Lightning Dash rolled her 
her eyes. Of course. This part chuckled and snapped up a plate of assorted muffins. There you go, but I think you should have the cake first. Cake, 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 the pie triplets chanted, pounding their hooves on the table. Girls, Pinky said firmly, that's not very polite. You know the birthday girls get a first bite out of the cake, and this one is one of the major rules at birthday parties. The full scrambled in line as Discord cut the chocolate frosted yellow cake. Uh, how many calories does this have? The white unicorn filly said, a chickly confident blue mane. I'm on a diet. Oh, please, Prism groaned, rolling her eyes. Don't be such a party pooper, Gemstone. Rarity laughed, patting her daughter's head. There's nothing wrong with a little cake. Besides, you're too young to be dieting. Gemstone was Prism's age at the time, nine, and the daughter of Rarity of Fancy Pants. Screwball did not wish wanted her to come because she was so fussy, but she is rarely seen, and Aunt Rarity since the marriage, whatever where she went, Gemstone went. Here you go, girls, Discord said, handling Dinky and Screwball each other a slice of cake. The ladies gasped gasped as the play flew out in the air in, in, uh, over a high chair, sat a gray foal with his pink hair and swirly red eyes. He clapped his hooves as the cake landed in front of him. Zany! Fluttershy exclaimed, swiping the dessert out of his reach. You shouldn't be eating cake. Besides, this belongs to your sister. Oh, let it go, honey. Discord chuckled. He's only five months old and his diet has already consists of chocolate. That's no excuse for him to steal his own from his own sister. That's okay, Mom, Screwball assured heard her as she took back the cake. When Zinni had arrived, Screwball had been worried that it meant she was no longer special. But after spending time with her new baby brother, they became the best of siblings. Zany was just so crazy as he was. He was only little and less over control of his powers, and he had surprised by everyone that he looked like his parents. When he did not, and he had his sister, but then yet again, nothing made sense with the family. The other guests included Rainbow Dash, Soren, and Free Kids, Pinkie Pie's free husband, Red Shoes, Apple Blossom, and her parents, Cinnamon Stick and Cinnamon Roll, and of course, Dinky's mother. I wish Twilight was here, Pinky said. She clomped down her cake. She's missing out on the fun. I know, she's busy with preparations for the Grand Galloping Gala next week, Rarity reminded her. Flutter Dash groaned. Dad, do we have to go? What's wrong with the gala? Soren asked. I thought you liked seeing your mother and us perform. Well, but it's so lightning shivered girly. It's not as lame as it used to be, Rainbow reassured her, but Aunt Scootaloo's gonna be there with her cutie mark crusaders. Prism gasped in delight. She loves Scootaloo as if she was her real aunt. Awesome! Is she going to do any cool scooter tricks? Rainbow laughed. We'll see. I can't wait to see Apple Bloom. Applejack sighed. I haven't seen her or the other since the heart harps were warming Eve. Well, they sure have been busy, Rarity said. I mean, they've been performing at biggest events of all Canterlot. Not to mention that they only just returned from their tour in Saddle Arabia. Sometime after they had graduated from school, Apple, Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo had performed a band. Even though they had received their cutie marks a long time ago, the name the cutie mark crusaders had struck. Sweetie Belle had the lead singer, Scootaloo had the main dancer, and Apple, Bloom had the costume and, and set designer. Although they still perform on stage with the others, fortunately Scootaloo's singing had been proved since the last talent show fiasco. And soon they became famous all over Equestria and were greatly missed by their families and friends. Princess Flutter by Lily will be here, here too, Fluttershy pointed out. And you all like her, don't you? I guess so, Screwball mumbled. But you still want me to wear a dress? Don't be rude, honey. Rarity's making the dress for you. That reminds me, Rarity exclaimed. You have to open your presents. Dinky squealed and raced towards the mountain of gifts. It was a traditional for the double birthday party that the girls would sleep over. Especially love Screwball's home, because they had all the fun rooms. Girls, it's time for bed, Fluttershy called. The teenagers groaned. Mom, we're 15, Screwball insisted. Can't we play a bowl one more game? Sorry, girls, the Pegasus said, ushering them to Screwball's room. But Rarity wants you all to be at the shop in the morning to try on your gowns. Her daughter sighed. Okay, Mom, we'll go to bed. But that wasn't necessary when they mean they wouldn't sleep. Guess what? I heard about Gold Digger. Said Lightning Dash, whispered once Fluttershy shut the door. What? Apple Blossom said, sitting up on the sleeping bag. Lightning gestured them to move closer. His dad told him to find a job, but the only job he was able to get at, he paused, she paused to snicker, a rock farm. The four mares began bursting out laughing, but then it got quiet when Fluttershy's voice was heard. Girls, you better not be talking. No, Mom, Screwball called. We're just doing our best to fall asleep. She listened to her supper and then saw... Saw her hearing, and her mother flew into the room. 
Coast is clear. How did Gold Digger got on a rock farm? Dinky inquired. His dad's the biggest rich businessman in town. Apparently no pony liked his personality, Lightning smirked, and I don't blame him. But there's only one justice in the world, Screwball giggled. My only regret is that I wasn't responsible for it. I can't wait to see the Grand Galloping Gala, Apple Blossom sighed. It's going to be magical. This was Apple Blossom's first gala. The children were not often invited, but it's because their mothers were barriers of the elements of harmony, and Lightning's parents were both Wonderbolts, and Screwball and Lightning had gone a few times before, and Screwball never really partied without Dinky. But this year, Apple Blossom was performing, and all of the members of the Apple family had been invited, which meant it was going to be quite a crowd. It's kind of dull, Screwball said flatly, until Daddy and I make it shake it up a bit. Don't forget the Wonderbolts, Lightning exclaimed. You can never get bored of watching my parents do the tricks. And all the food's great, Dinky piped in. Plus, what can you mark Crusaders? This is going to be the Grand Galloping Gala ever. I hope so, Apple Blossom said. I want this night to be the best night ever. How so, Lightning asked slyly. Are you going to ask my brother to dance? The yellow pony blushed. What? Come on, Blossom, Screwball said, rolling her eyes. We all know you and Thunder have been digging for each other ever since the day you met. I, I don't know what are you... Don't even try lying to me. I know you are. You could ask him on to be your date, Dinky suggested. You two look so good together. I, I don't know. He... I think he would, Lightning said. Apple Blossom blinked up at her. You do? I'm his sister, and there's nothing about Thunder that I don't know. Oh, but I don't think I should be able to. We'll help you. Screwball reassured her. What are friends for? The mares went quietly and cackled and echoed throughout the room as lightning flashed. If you don't go to sleep right now, you won't have any friends. Lightning, Dinky, and Apple Blossom shrieked when Screwball oh, simply rolled her eyes. Dad, that's not funny. Don't make me get the balloons. She ducked under the covers. Good night. Who's so scared about balloons? Lightning inquired. Her question was just answered with a bunch of balloons with smiley faces surrounding them. And they started laughing. The girls squealed and hid under their sleeping bags. Okay, okay, we'll go to sleep. The balloons appeared, disappeared in the flash. Sweet dreams, girls. Psst. Dinky whispered, nudging her friend. Screwball, are you asleep? Screwball groaned and sat up in bed. Ugh, not anymore. I have something to tell you. Have you been, you pinky promised to keep it a secret? Is it about what you really wish for today? How did you really know? Dinky, I could tell when you're lying. Right. You still have to pinky promise. Screwball wearily made a gesture. Cross my heart and hope to fly. Stick a cupcake in my eye. Of course, Dinky then looked down in sleeping bags on the friends on the floor and leaned towards Screwball. I wish that cinnamon stick would dance with me at the gala. The earth pony scoffed. I was wondering when you were going to tell me. You mean you know? I'm your best friend, Dink. I've been that way ever since you looked at him. The unicorn blushed. I bet you haven't seen cinnamon stick look at me the same way. Why wouldn't he? Well, I'm just not exactly normal. Dinky and his dad, dad is a dragon. And do you think he cares about being normal? I'm going to give you the same advice Apple Blossom did. Go for it, girl. Whatever you got to lose. Of course, Dinky sighed. Maybe you're right, but I can, can't tell every pony, especially not Cinnamon Stick. I won't. You be, but you better. So, what if I told you my secret? Can you tell me yours? Screwball smile faint. What secret? I don't know, the unicorn blinked upon the window. Maybe you left the chalk- why you left the chocolate bar off the window? Panic and Screwball made the evidence vanish on sight. What chocolate bar? Dinky rolled her matched eyes. Really? How stupid do you think I am? You're not, she sighed in defeat. But fine, but you got a pinky promise now. Once that was done, Screwball whispered as low as she could. Remember a few years ago when you thought that you had a special sun pony? Dinky nodded. Well, you weren't entirely wrong. The unicorn gasped. Why didn't you tell me? I'm your best friend. Uh, says the mare who can't confess of her own crush. Fair point. Who is it? Well, that I can't tell you, but it's nothing personal, Dinky. It's just if my dad finds out, I'd be in big trouble. So the fewer ponies, knees in the better. But anyways, he left the chocolate, so I had to leave some out in case he comes by. He visits you in your sleep? Talk about that stalker. That's just about the only way these days. His mother's very controlling, and I just haven't been seeing him in a while. But if I wake up and the chocolate's gone, I know he's been there. Dinky then stared with her mouth open in wonder. Have you kissed? Screwball glanced down. N it, no, it wasn't anything like that. But at one point, it's kind of, you know. Oh, so I guess we better go to sleep then. Uh-huh. 
Well, if your special sun pony does come tonight, I don't think he would want us to see him. Screwball smiled. That's not the ounce of stupidity in you, Dinky. The two best friends slid back under the covers and closed their eyes. Before Screwball drifted off to sleep, she wondered on what Muffball was doing. She had not seen him since her 12th birthday, and he had been coming less and less, but but never ever forgot about her birthday. Whatever his mother was dragging him, she was keeping him in a light, tight leash. She had, had, had only met because of the queen once, so Screwball could only imagine what she was putting the prince through. Queen Crystal circled around as she sat around her son and sat upright on the throne. Now, what have we learned about love? Love is for weakness for the victim, but strength for us, Mothball said with indifference. And what are the, the questions? The enemy. And what is your doing, D? I must find food for the hive and drain the enemy of the power and even take my rightful place as ruler of the changelings. And what you must do then, no, if anyone tries to stop you, I must depose them. Chrysalis cuckled darkly. <laughs> You're ready. Mother, may I go hunting now? I'm quite famished. Very well. Go, my son. Make mummy proud. Once the hive was out of sight, Mothball let out a sigh of relief. He thought that he would never be able to get out of there. He had not been fibbled about being hungry, and the main reason he said that so he could see Screwball. It was her birthday, and at this time, he was going to let her see him. It's going to be six months without visiting her. It was more desperate than ever. He was ever over Everfree Forest and thought that it occurred to him that he were to accidentally feed on her own. But of course, from especially with his stomach being empty, it was best to fill it up first. So, with, he changed into a course toward a ponyville. It was so late at night that a few ponies were out and about. Mothball ducked under an alleyway and his eyes followed a green gray pegasus. It hadn't proved much in his mind in the book from the form of the stallion that appeared on the mare's head mind but of course sometimes he could make out the pony's name he must figure out what the name is before he was a doctor wait a minute the pegasus saw him her eyes then went wide and mothball noticed that he that one eye was different directly at him doctor she uttered yes miss mothball said in particular accent with searching for the main mayor's name hooves she then screeched as the mayor back tackled them into a hug and they both fell over she squeezed them so hard the prince was about to burst but yet his stomach was filling quickly, so he did not complain. That is, until the mare stood up and slapped him in the face. You've got a lot of nerve, she cried. Sixteen years and you don't even bother to call? Mothball raised an eyebrow. I I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't even make up for its sixteen years you've missed. Now, do you know how hard it is to tell any pony who's Dinky's father was? I'm really Dinky. The mare then glanced down her hooves. She's your daughter? Mothball blinked. You're Dinky's mother? Of course. I am her mother. Why weren't you listening? I thought you uh, ma many mares have you. The prince then panicked. He swore to not feed off of Screwball's friends. But did the mother's furs of friends count? His stomach was nearly full, so it was about time so he left anyway. Darling, he purred, standing up. I can't stay for long. Oh, Derp, he said. Do you have to battle with the Daleks or something? Uh, what? He recalled to his mother, listening to a roll with the words. Er, uh, yes, but don't worry. He stepped forth and then put his hoof underneath the mare's chin, causing her to giggle. I will return soon. Derpley narrowed her eyes at the shaped hoof body, but that was the last time you said that 16 years later. And you show up in the, out of the blue? You didn't even come for your daughter's birth? Mothball then cast a spell on her, telling her the disappropriate guy's green. I apologize, darling, he whispered, but I really must be going. Now you are to head home and get some rest and forget that anything of this happened. Understood? Derpy nodded, did absently minded, and then began to make her journey home. Mothball sighed and returned to the alley to remove his disguise. He spent desperately toning with the pony's emotions, but this was something, only method of survival. And that poor pony had thought that he'd been talking to the, her, her, her father's child, whom he had not seen for years, and he had, was at the verge of tears, and because of him, if Screwball knew that he had become... Screwball, he nearly forgot. He was about to take off of the vase of roses caught in his eye, and he was the owner who was not to miss. The flight of the chaotic castle seemed to be take no time at all. Before he knew it, he looked at Screwball's bedroom window, and as usual, a bar of chocolate was sitting there. But there was not the first thing he noticed. He stared at the free young mare's faces and slept peacefully. He, she even looked prettier than when he last saw her. Now that he belonged to the open eyes, so he could stare at her infirmatively. He stiff uh, stiffed as he heard from the snore that did not come from Screwball, 
He looked closer to see the unicorn friend sleeping beside her. He glanced down at the floor and noticed two other mares in the room. A traditional sleepover completely slipped his mind. There was no way he was not going to let he was going to let her see him now. The others might wake up. He sighed sadly and took the bar of chocolate, replacing it with the rose. Happy birthday, screwball, the prince whispered. He stole one more glance at her before returning to the hive.